<laughs> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 15th September 2014 Town of Hampton Selectman's meeting. Huh. Number one is public comment period. Those wishing public comment, please take the podium. State your name. Seeing no public comment. Roman two announcements and community calendar. Selectman Wells. Yeah, pardon me. You were you were a little bit uh, oh. hesitant. Are you are you well, public comment? To somebody else who stood up. Oh, my, eye, my eyes must be going hard. Please, the podium is yours. We're back to uh, public comment. <clears throat> All right. Art Moody, Three Thompson Road. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was, uh, yeah, you, uh, this board last spring that I brought up the trustees of trust funds annual report that was in the town report and mentioned a couple of things that... <laughs> they've been doing that weren't kosher. And uh, one of them was uh, changing a state form and putting a column that reads income, meaning income earned during the year, each trust fund and each capital reserve fund, they'd put net income. So that's a red flag. And the only fee they mention is uh, something like 18000 to Mackinson and Company. And it seemed to be another complaint I had was that it wasn't based on income as required. Charitable Trust Bureau of the Attorney Office, General, General's Office has had a long-standing regulation that any money taken out of income of trust fund has to come from income. It can't be more than 8%. Anything above 8% you have to appropriate in your budget. Well, the reply from uh, the chairman of the trustees of trust fund, Silver Dick, was an email, I guess, to the chairman who read it. It was after the public comment period. I didn't get a copy. I've lived in the same address for 45 years. It's in the phone book. And uh, last week I followed up on that with the complain about illegally taking town of Hampton revenue to pay for servicing capital reserve funds of other three other jurisdictions and the town of Hampton, all of which is illegal. And this has been going on for years. Apparently, ever since the open-ended contract to Mackinson and Company was voted with Chairman Silver Dick breaking the two to two tie. It has no expiration date, as I recall. And that contract has led with approval of the trustees over the year of taking that money out and not listing all the fees involved in their <coughs> annual report. And now we come to the situation where we have to go back years and recover those ill-gotten gains that each year five trustees signed MS-9s and MS-10s to the state. And they were false because they weren't authorized. So... I'm calling on the board to look into recovery and stop this procedure. And I don't know the intricates. The contract uh, should be made available in the town office somewhere. What is authorized? Now, we also have that company in Iowa that is the custodial for these all these trust funds and capital reserve funds out of state for the first time ever ever since trustees of trust funds were first elected in 1917. And how they display these investments, certificates, to the auditor every year is beyond me. 
if it's in Iowa. I assume it's still there. And they were the first year that I think they paid that company eighteen thousand or thirteen thousand. Mr. Moody. Thirteen thousand. Excuse me, sir. Point of order. We we allow four minutes. Uh, another minute to wrap up, please. Thank you. I, I don't like to be interrupted. Thank you, sir, for your cooperation. Further public comment, sir. Thank you. My name is Sonny Kravitz, and I live at Eight Saint Cyr Drive in Hampton. Honorable members of the Select Board, I was reappointed to a three-year term to the Hampton Energy Committee by this board on May 19th of this year. I was sworn in on May 20th. I'm resigning from the Hampton Energy Committee as of this date. I take this step because I have no desire to serve under the current committee chair le leadership, where a disagreement over process was turned into a personal attack on my volunteer activity and integrity. I reserve my right to return to this select board in the future after reviewing a, a series of RSA documents and a tape that I picked up today from the town. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Mr. Welch. Sir. Further public comment this evening? Seeing none. Roman two announcements, community calendar, Selectman Wilson. None? No. None? Okay, thank you. Selectman Griffin, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, I would just like to thank all the people that um, got in touch with me in many different ways uh, for my recent surgery, and it was very successful, and I can only encourage other people to do the same thing. But thank you, and thank you for all the different things I received. It was very nice. Thank you. First of all, welcome back, Rick. Uh, second of all, I had a chance to uh, uh, meet with uh, some uh, st uh, State Senator Nancy Stiles on Friday, and uh, she was down at the uh, construction site down to the beach uh, for the new seawall. And uh, uh, Jim, ha we happened to run into each other down there, and we... Uh, we talked to them while we were there. We talked with uh, some members of the, from the state. Uh, we talked to members of Audley about the construction going on down there and, and some of our concerns about the um, safety of our citizens. Well, one of the things that was pointed out by them was that that section of the road, if you look at it where the parking is very narrow, it's narrower there than anywhere else in the street on, on Ocean Boulevard. Also, this year they're trying to do 62 sections of that wall, which last year they only the most they've ever done is 30. So they have a lot going on in a, in a small area. What they what they did at, at uh, the suggestion of Nancy Stiles and both both Jim and I is the parking spaces because it from 16th Street to High Street yeah. is now blocked off. The problem we've had is with some of our residents in town is they park down at our parking at the end of High Street and the, to walk the wall. It's a construction site, people. You shouldn't be walking in a construction site. So the spaces from 14th, the state spaces on the boulevard from 14th Street to 16th Street, if you have a town sticker, just like you, you would use if you park in the town parking lot, you will not be, to, uh, you will not be ticketed. So the, those, two spa those two streets the spaces between 14th Street and 16th Street for our town residents, if they have a um, if they have a parking sticker like you would use in our normal town lot, they the, the state is going to allow the town residents to park there, so they don't have to walk through the construction site to get to a parking area. It doesn't create everything that we wanted or everything we would like to see, but it also it opened my eyes as to why they need as much space as they do down there. So. This at least gives our residents a place to park where they're not going to worry about getting a ticket, and they just have to walk a little farther south instead of going all the way back to the, the uh, high street. So I think it was, uh, at least it was a compromise from them, and I appreciated the help. How Thank long? You. 
Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, we're going we're gonna to stick to community announcements. We can bring this issue up under old business, but we're not going to have a dialogue now. Sir. Okay. I agree with Rusty. Stay out of the construction site. Walk south. It's a good deal. I'd also like to uh, comment that this week, uh, Saturday, reached the beach relay, was mm -hmm. in Hampton, and finished at the State Park. You had about 5,500 5, to 6,000 runners come through, yeah. and the Rotary Club does the beer tent. And for all those people, you didn't have one bit of a problem. Right. And mo and a lot most of the money that the Reach the Beach collects goes to local charities. They have groups that volunteer mm -hmm. along the way and they donate a lot of money to local charities. And I know all the money we make in there goes to local charities. So I think it was a great event. I think September is a great month mm -hmm. for Hampton for the beach area with the seafood yeah. festival and reach the beach. It's good advertising for the town. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Welch, any community announcements? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Roman 3, consent agenda, please. And uh, point of order, uh, Rome, uh, Roman 3, number 3, uh, Seabrook Station tax abatement settlement agreement will not be part of that agenda item this evening. A motion? I'll make that motion. Seconded second. by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 4, appointments. 1, Norm Silberdick, trustees of the trust funds, Alpha HB 297, Petition Warrant Article. Sir. We're going to invite some of our Please. Please do. And Warren Mackinson and Brian. Okay. Please pull up a chair if you need an additional chair. Thank you. We have, uh, first of all, thank you, we have five members of our trustee of the Trust Funds Committee. I am Norman Silver, Chairman. To my left is Steve Falzone, mm -hmm. a member of the committee, Warren Mackinson, our financial advisor, and the former owner of Mackinson and & Company, and John Sovich, another trustee of the Trust Funds. First of all, before we get into the purpose of our conversation, which is the proposed Warren article, uh, I would like to personally invite our chief critic, uh, Arthur Moody, to attend our next meeting, October 20th, right here. Uh, we have, we've warned the meeting, it's put up on our bulletin boards appropriately here in town and library to come in and air any grievances you might have and some of the comments you've been making are erroneous and without absolute total correctness in their facts, and we would like to have a discussion and help clarify his perceptions and view of the trustees of trust fund. So, or anybody else is welcome. These are public meetings. Um, SB 9297, HB, sorry, excuse me, House Bill. <laughs> was uh, approved and for the there were several elements to it and uh, one of those included the keeping of uh, certain trust records in electronic format which we do here in Hampton and um, secondly another aspect of it was the uh, allowing the appointment of alternative trustees to the trust <coughs> funds and we'll, in our last meeting that because we are a five-member board, we did not feel, and we have generally excellent attendance. I don't believe anybody's ever missed a meeting, or maybe one person has missed a meeting. Uh, we did not feel, because this was not a, something we were compelled to do, that the, the board decided it did not need alternate trustees. <coughs> the final item related to the uh, payment of fees for um, the capital reserve funds which previously had been incorporated uh, in our overall real estate trust fund and the smaller trust funds as well we in Hampton because of our real estate uh, trust fund we pay all fees through the real estate trust funds and this bill would allow us to segregate those fees among the smaller trust funds which include the poor trust funds, the library, the cemetery, and sports trust funds, and then the capital reserve funds, which include roads, Department of Public Works, et cetera, SAU 90. And um, 
So the language that we had presented, which we sent to uh, after our last meeting and a couple of amendments to that, which we sent to the Attorney General to review and get back to us as to whether the, the language was acceptable, and if not, we would be happy to meet on the 20th of October and discuss the line to, to make any adjustments, was to see if the town will vote pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 35-9-A- looks like II, et cetera. <laughs> Roman two to authorize the trustees of trust funds to pay for capital reserve fund investment services and any other expenses incurred from capital reserve funds income. Presently, all such expenses are paid from the income of the real estate trust funds, reducing the income potential of the town's largest investment income producer. If, if approved, such authority shall remain in effect until rescinded by town vote, but in no case before five years have elapsed in the original adoption of this article. We're talking a uh, grand total of, uh, I believe, $2,100. Uh, the uh, fees that we, that are charged and that have been approved by the trustees of trust fund are based upon the total amount of money that is under management, which is approximately $20 million. And so that at the end of the year, we take the balance of the funds and Mackinson and Company gets one tenth of one percent, which is twenty thousand dollar fee, which is paid quarterly. There's no other adjustments until the end of the year when we have our final tally as to what's in the what's in the funds. So, if there was some question as to whether we should be paying for the um, smaller trust funds or the capital reserve funds or when to it, etc., uh, we could then if we're in some error, we've taken a simple approach, we would then go back to the town and say we want to add this to our budget, and we'd add the expenses in our operating budget to pay for the fees, and then alternatively you'd get more income, but the income would equal $2,100 to offset what we're paying for fees. So basically it's six and one half a dozen the other. We've taken a very simple business-like approach in saying we're paying for a service, which includes the management, of these trust funds because we are invested in securities. Uh, in the case of the of the uh, <coughs> smaller trust funds, they are invested to allow for income appreciation, no longer in CDs or, or T bills, or something that yields nothing. And our capital <coughs> reserves funds, we realize that the money comes in and out, so they're very liquid and they're able to be uh, uh, reduced immediately and given back to the the source, the town, for the most part, and the whereas the real estate trust fund tends to be into perpetuity. Uh, so basically, that that's what this bill accomplishes. It's really on a statewide basis, so that at many communities that are now sitting with their monies in CDs and T bills, etc., will probably, by the virtue of having this bill passed, will be able to consider having. Uh, investment advisors manage your money, but that has no impact on Hampton. That's just really on a statewide basis. That's why the bill was, was passed and approved. So all we're doing is asking for this warrant article to pass or some modification to it if you have any issues with it. Thank you, sir. Questions, Selectman Wilsey. Um, I'm still thinking of the whole thing and digesting, so I have nothing at the moment. Sir. Thank you for the good job that you've done. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. No, I think it's uh, I think you're correct in inviting Mr. Moody to your meeting. Yeah, I think uh, um, he may have some questions that are that are there, and if he if he, if you guys can answer them for him, all the better. Yeah. I mean, he's going right to the yeah the, yeah. the horse's mouth, as you want to say. But I mean, that's the way he's, you know he's going right to the people. Mouth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going right to. <laughs> He's going right to you guys if he's got the questions. And if he still has questions, I'm sure he'll be back to right. see us. So. Yeah. yeah, it's slow. So, but thank you for work you do. Select and Wendell. Uh, fine. I, you know, if the RSA passed, it's what you guys think is the best way to, to manage it. You know, the, I'm with it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. I would simply say House Bill 297. Is that correct? Yes. 
Uh, it was an act relative to the management of trust funds and capital reserve funds pertaining to the library trustees. It was passed by legislators from this district, uh, sponsors, Rice, um, Emmerich, Stiles, uh, and it's with capital reserve management and pertaining to library trustees. The amended analysis that allows municipalities to keep certain trust records in electronic format. It changes the date by which certain municipal sums shall be transferred. It allows municipalities to contract for brokerage assistance with town trust funds. It allows library trustees to govern investments through application of the prudent investor rule. Your, uh, your, your funds and your management has uh, yielded uh, very nice benefits for the town. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, going forward, I would uh, just ask that the town attorney take a chop at your warrant article and make sure it marries up with the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, once he's dotted the I's and crosses the T's, it comes before the board and we endorse it. Great. That's uh, what we requested of him. So. Close enough? Yeah. If there's any other questions or you'd like to ask any of our other trustees? No, anything? sir. Okay. I do. Manager, have any sir? No. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Barring any further questions, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Roman four, appointments, two, Director Noyes, Department of Public Works, Alpha, Hampton Beach Infiltration and Inflow Study Report Presentation, Underwood Engineers. Just a summary sheet of information you, that's Keith. already been provided to you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, the town of Hampton has about a half a million billion gallons of uh, storm water that's entering the sewer system, and we um, that's very costly to treat, and it's unnecessary to treat, and we um, hired. Underwood engineers of Portsmouth to take a look at that, particularly in the beach area, to try to determine how best to come up with a plan to uh, eliminate or at least reduce that infiltration. And I'm um, just going to turn it right over to Keith Pratt, who is the president of Underwood Engineers, and he's going to give us a uh, presentation on the results of their uh, study and report. Okay. Thanks, Keith. And again, uh, thanks for having us. Keith Pratt with Underwood Engineers and uh, Cole Melendi with my office also uh, did much of this work here over the last uh, six months to a year. Keith just handed out a fact sheet. It's one page. I'll just speak to that and give you a brief overview, about 10 minutes on the report, and then be happy to answer any questions. But we were tasked with looking specifically at the beach area. <coughs> it represents about 60,000 feet of your collection system, which I think is about 25%, maybe about a quarter of the entire collection system. Uh, of that 60,000, the town has replaced about 48,000 feet of it with PVC. Um, most of it used to be P uh, VC, vitrified clay. Uh, so there's about 12,000 feet, or about 20% of it is, is remaining as vitrified clay. Uh, we, uh, when we did this start, it took a stepwise approach. One of the things we did is we went out at night uh, when there's really no or very little domestic or sanitary use. And we actually went into <coughs> many of the manholes. And so at night, the presumption is, and we measured the flow in each one of those manholes. We, we leapfrogged up, up the manholes. And when there's, when there's very little sanitary flow, we can measure the, uh, what's coming in from groundwater and stormwater. And so based on that, we can start predicting and, and estimating and making this, uh, determinations as where a lot of it's entering the system. So we did that. That took that occurred over a period of a few weeks uh, uh, during spring. We also then, based on that, took a closer look at specific areas that were found to have high INI based on the flow isolation. We put a camera in the, in the pipe so we can look for defects. Uh, we also uh, observed some of the manholes and, and took uh, notes on what we saw in the manholes, if we saw leaking. And we looked at flow records, and one of the things we had access to was some data from 1984 that was done previously, as well as stuff that the town did in 2011 and 12. And actually, most recently, one of the reasons we issued the final report this spring was because we used some of the flow records from your new Church Street pump station. And then we also went out and actually observed high tides. So we had staff on the ground looking at what happens at extreme tide events at 10.2 and above. So what we found um, in summary was that there's uh, 
and we did all this work in the spring, by the way, so we weren't in peak sanitary use. It was, uh, we see about 120,000 gallons a day, we think, or we, we estimate based on uh, uh, off-season uh, use. But we saw a persistent or a consistent baseline infiltration that, that varies depending on when you measure it, but pretty consistently almost a half a million gallons a day. More recently, we've seen it drop a little bit. We also saw during the high tide events, um, 55 of your manholes were submerged. And that's about just under 20% of them. And when they're submerged, we see the big spikes coming down Church Street pumping station. So we were able to observe and measure that as well. Uh, we did notice uh, some of the some good news things too. Uh, the vitrified clay program and the replacement program that you've done, based on the old records that we had, you've reduced your eye and eye in the beach areas by about a half. So that's been a, a fairly successful program, and it's working. Uh, we found that the remaining infiltration, about 89% of it. So about what we saw, about 89% of what we saw was located in about 32% of your collection system out there. So we were able to target a little bit more and focus in on specific problem areas. One thing we did also notice, though, it's not all necessarily the old clay. We're still seeing some stormwater and groundwater entering in, even in some of the areas that have been replaced. We found some spot repairs, just some in our work, some specific areas that we identified and tagged for the department to take a look at, and those usually are pretty easy to repair or a lot easier and less expensive than maybe a whole mainline repair and can reduce infiltration by quite a bit. So we identified about five or six of those. We also, one of the things we do, um, a lot of our INI work is start taking a look at private INI. In the industry, that's a big um, issue that we're paying attention to. Towns tend to do a fairly good job keeping up with their system um, and they reduce the INI in their collection system but what, they're, what we're finding that there's still a lot of INI entering the system from private sources. So we made notes on that where we could um, uh, identify it and uh, noted that maybe a little bit more work needed to be done in that area. Summary of some of the recommendations that we came up, uh, we are recommending that some of these spot repairs that we found be identified, I mean they are identified but be repaired. Uh, additional investigations may need to be done to, 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 to find some of these other higher areas. Um, that just requires a little bit more TV work, maybe. We are recommend, one of the things we did is just the beach area. So we created a prioritized and um, identified program that the department could use for uh, capital planning. But one of the things we identified is that we have not looked at or been tasked looking at the rest of the system. So looking at the rest of the system in terms of INI might be worthwhile to help prioritize uh, projects that, that may exist out there that may actually have a higher priority than the beach. Uh, we are recommending that you continue with the VC replacement program, and I think there is a project um, coming up in a year or two that's, that's continuing that effort. Um, there's, there probably are rules and ordinances in place in Hampton that requ require certain expectations for private I&I, and, and maybe we just review and make sure that the policies and the procedures for private I&I and are current. And then um, based on the program that we identified, um, we're, we're suggesting a uh, reassessment every few years to, uh, to look at the success. Now one of the things, there's two things that I think the report does a lot for you, but there's two things that I think it, it, it does that I want you to remember, and that is this actually provides kind of a snapshot on what we see today. So as you move forward with programs and, and improvements, it's a measurement stick. You can come back and say, yes, we've been successful, and yes, we've been uh, reducing it. And it also gives you a tool to help planning for your capital improvements, particularly in the beach area. That is um, a brief summary of the report. Um, Certainly be happy to answer any questions. Keith, I don't know if I missed anything that you'd like to add. No, I think you covered it. It's a lot of material to cover in a short amount of time, but I asked Keith specifically to, to keep it short to allow <laughs> plenty of time for my budget tonight, so that gets approved. <laughs> um, but I think that this is... I'm free uh, all night, by the way, so... <laughs> um, this, this is a good planning tool for the town to use to start attacking this infiltration um, issue. The, the other part of that is that it, it doesn't make sense. And what's happened in the past <coughs> many times in this town is 
the town has gone and reconstructed or overlaid streets where the, 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 the um, without uh, replacing or repairing the pipes underneath, specifically in our case, the, the sewer system and the clay pipes. So now you're investing all this money into a road that in a year's time or even less, you could have a major sewer break and have to go and excavate the road. Uh, what we're trying to do, we've already gone in and evaluated all the roads in town and came up with a long-term uh, paving plan based strictly on the use of the road and the condition of the roads. This is an important piece of that planning process where now we can marry the plan of uh, the worst case scenarios for the pipes, either the condition, that, whether it's clay pipe or cracking pipe, leaking pipe or whatever, and we can marry the two uh, plans together. And so that's an important thing that in order to, you know, have a good CIP and have a good planning tool. My suggestion is that now that we've, um, you know, saw how much infiltration is down there and we've seen some specific, specific areas, we want to, between this year and next year, attack the specific uh, improvements that they've identified that will be the biggest bang for the buck by taking infiltration out of the system. And that's not by replacing hundreds of feet of pipe, but some very specific spot repairs. So we have money in the budget, in the, in the budget that we'll be discussing next to do some of that work and maybe even using some of this year's money to, to do that as well. So I think that, you know, if we can concentrate on the Hampton Beach area and replacing that clay pipe down there, is a first step, and that's going to be millions of dollars. They've got some estimates in there. But uh, I just would really encourage this town to, to bite the bullet literally and really start investing in, in that uh, infrastructure and, and uh, making the improvements so that we can follow through with the road reconstruction as well. Selectman Wolsey. Selectman Wolsey, questions? Um, I have stuff. Um, I have I read the report. I admit some of the charts are beyond me, so I confess that. But I appreciate the report. And I am both sad and aggravated when I look back at the $17.5 million that was spent on the beach infrastructure project using design build. We did not begin to get the town's money's, money's worth out of that. Um, to, to undertake a project like that without adequate planning was dreadful. I agree with you, Keith, about biting the bullet, and I agree with you about planning. <coughs> but when you cannot get boards of selectmen to consistently stick to a plan of action, like the $7.8 million sewer bond in 1986, it's never followed up, never. And it's to our best interest, I think you would agree, to cut this infiltration and to stop the sewer lines, the clay lines from degrading because we're trying to prolong the life of our wastewater treatment plant, which is gonna cost a fortune to replace. So I, I appreciate what you've done here. I think it's an excellent study. I congratulate you for being exceptionally brave and going down in the manholes. Um, that sounds scary. I can't tell from the numbers on the manhole covers that you reference in here where the areas are that you're having the problem with them. Has it, has it helped at all to have the manhole covers with the gaskets on them, or is that just a partial? Because I, I was surprised after that project was done that some of the areas, especially the heavy flooding like Brown Avenue and so forth, that the manhole covers, the gasket manhole covers were not part of that project. Can you tell us a little more about those manhole covers? I can tell you that they're, they are used a lot. Um, I think what happens with them, and this technology's come a long ways even more recently too with some new manhole covers that work even better, but some of the older ones were plastic type inserts maybe that were put in. Um, what happens is when the manholes get maintained, they get broken, they get cracked, or just mm -hmm. freeze thaw creates some yep. problems with them. So they're hard to maintain, and then they get a, and then they they tend to be lost, gone, and then they don't have the same benefit. 
So we have talked a little bit in here about some ideas going forward with some of the newer technologies. There's some there's manholes now that are actually hinged, and they have some some type of they have these gasket structures that actually allow you to to just pick them up on a hinge and drop them back down. There's been more recently now, the past three or four years in New Hampshire, there's been some experience with those. So there's some some things like that now going forward that close a closer look could be given to the types of covers to be used because. Um, the high tides and the floodings are a fact of life for you down there, mm -hmm. but um, they are high peaks. It comes right up and then it comes right back down, and it creates costs for you in terms of pumping and treatment because of the spikes. Mm -hmm. But it's not a long-term baseline infiltration, so it's, it's a separate problem of its own, but it can be managed fairly well, and I think some of the new technologies can work towards that. And if I may just add, just like when we had to put in a man, new sewer manhole for the new fire station, mm -hmm. we, we put in the, uh, those type of lids. And any new ones now we're putting in, uh, requiring the developer to put, or the owner to, to put those in to, to spend the cost to do that. Good. The other thing I wanted to mention is on your concern about the design build concept. Mm. I totally agree with that. I'm not to, I'm not against design build under certain circumstances, but to do it for a um, infrastructure improvements like such as that just doesn't make sense. It's left you, know. you with a mess because yeah. part of the work was done, but you still have a lot. I was appalled at the private at some of the abandoned lines, a lot of the things that you've discussed in here. So it left us with a positive with say 50%, 60% covering the problem, mm -hmm. but for 17 and a half million dollars, we didn't do the west side streets, there's a huge amount of work that wasn't done down there and that's left you with a mess mm -hmm. and it's left the town with a mess and we're not even talking about the rest of the town. Right. So I, thank, I hope that we can proceed with one of these studies for the rest of the town at some point and I hope we can get some kind of guidance or, pre or, or um, a listing of the priorities that you see for what's left of the beach and the cost factor. And the other part in my mind would be to sell that, uh, sell the project to finish the remainder of the beach as a a step project, but something that the town has to commit to. You can't just do the first phase. You cannot do it. And with boards of selectmen changing, you get the board that says, oh, oh, we don't want to do that. And then the whole project falls apart. Well, ideally, from a cost standpoint, it would make sense just to take the, the whole beach project and do it at one time, bid it out, because you're going to get a magnitude of such that you're going to get big contractors. But what we've got working against us at the beach is two seasons. We got the right. summer season where you can't move down there, and then you got the winter season. Right. So I've been talking to Keith, and, and we've been looking at how much work does it make sense to do in either a spring fall type of right. project, or just a spring, and, or just a fall. And we're looking at that yeah. to separate it out because there's just no way it's going to be. We're going to be able to do it ideally over you know just one contract. But I agree with you though in, in presenting the whole lump sum in the context that then you won't get sandbagged two or three years later when people will not go forward with the mm -hmm. next segment. But we've got to get this under control because what Fred's estimate two years ago was to replace the wastewater street treatment plant, we would be in, what, 60 to $100 million. That's a lot of money, and we're trying to prevent that or hold it off, mm -hmm. I assume. But thank you. I, I think it was, uh, wasn't, um, Fred said it would put me to sleep, but it didn't. But, but, but I really appreciate the work that went into it and the foundation that you've got here. This is long overdue, mm -hmm. long overdue. But I'm just so frustrated thinking of what could have been accomplished had a proper study like this have been on the table. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really sad. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for, for what you guys so did. Yes. Now, Mr. Walsh, wasn't the design build um, contract $12 million? Twelve and a half. Yeah. Twelve and a half, and there were some add-ons. And interest yeah, for they were down at the well, part at 17 if, it's, if you include the interest. Yes. Yeah. Okay, just a point of order. Selectman Griffin has the floor. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. 
I mean, I just hate seeing, I mean, I, I vividly remember it was promoted to everybody that it was 12 million. Now she's counting interest and everything else. I just like the way that these type of things are dropped into the conversation, like they're fat. It happens too often around here. And <clears throat> I'd like to know who put those uh, uh, pipes that were there to begin with, the ones that you're concerned about, the clay pipes, when were they put in there? <laughs> In the pillar uh, various times uh, Rick, over the years. But they were put in by the Hampton Beach Improvement. Probably. Um, so this will be the first time the town has invested any money for those particular areas where they've been collecting tax money for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I encourage, I, I hate to hear Mrs. Woolsey say these things because I know there were all kinds of studies that were done before. And they were presented to the Board of Selectmen that was here as legitimate studies. It's easy to come back later to have someone who was negative about the whole thing to begin with to come in and say all these untruths and expect people to believe them. Thank you. Selectman like Bridal. Yes. First of all, thank you for your study. It's something this town needs to do, needs mm -hmm. to do more often with what we have, not only with our sewers, but with our, with our buildings. <clears throat> for too long, we've, we've built our infrastructure and then, okay, we've done that. Let's go on to something else. And nothing gets done to maintain it. Yeah. And we need to look and focus on that <coughs> and do that more often. So I appreciate all the work that you have into this. Thank you. Select my model. Same thing. I read the I read the study. I wish I could understand that a little more, you know, not being an engineer, but it was well done. Well well I think the summaries were well done and and even a dummy can understand it, I guess. Uh, so it was good. And you know, I always think look forward, don't look back. You know, let's do what needs to be done. Let's 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 improve what needs to be done. You know, for the matter. And yeah, I support you guys on this. I, I think it's really necessary. Thank you. Select rules are great. For he who refuses to learn the lessons of history is doomed to repeat it. Um, I just want to mention to all of you that yes, the project was sold as a twelve million dollar project, and it was a twelve million dollar project. But you always pay for interest, and everyone in their taxes has paid for the interest. And this isn't about me. This is about what this town and is doing. And back to Select Me. I totally agree with uh, Mr. Waddell that there's no purpose in looking back. I have lived in Hampton Beach for 52 years, and everybody that I know that lives there considers this the major piece of action that's been done there. It's encouraged all the growth that's going on now and all the positiveness. This was something that was considered very successful. I will like to say one thing for the record. Some of the people that didn't get what they would like to have gotten now, the neighbors fought so unmercifully that they finally didn't, they just said, okay, that's fine, because there was a shortage of money. But many times they listen to the different <coughs> neighbors, and I see the different ones in here. So thank you. Well, and, and I just say, you know, I, I think the town has invested. We just invested three and a half million dollars into the Church Street pump station, which is an important anchor in this whole thing. No matter what you, you do so down there, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's my point. Thank you. If I may wrap up, I have some comments. I uh, I worked in a uh, pipe. It was called the uh, Seabrook Nuclear uh, Tunnel, uh, drilling and blasting under the ocean, under the harbor. I have a little bit of experience with uh, engineering. Uh, working there, uh, spent four years at the nuclear plant, uh, worked for Public Works uh, under George Hardart, and uh, worked uh, extensively with a, a construction engineer battalion for a, a big gun club. Um, I read the report, I studied the report for hours and hours, and uh, I think there's a lot of encouragement for things that this town has done right, uh, and how that we do manage uh, the resource of water. And I think the wastewater treatment plant is a misnomer. It's a water treatment plant. And that uh, when the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has guidelines, well, perhaps that's in the Berkshires. And when the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services doesn't have any guidelines, rightfully so. We, uh, we deal enough with uh, state and federal mandates that never give us money. And mm -hmm. people in offices sit places and they legislate and they come down here and they want into our wallets and our pockets. Uh, additionally, 40 CFR Part 133 uh, is a threshold whether I and I is, is excessive. Is that in Phoenix, Arizona? Or how about uh, next to the state beach? And when you look at your report from Underwood, uh, I've read the deed for that beach where a lot of this water comes from. Uh, and I find it interesting that uh, we want to pick on people on B Street for a sump pump when the state has a beach there. Uh, doesn't support any of our 
uh, infrastructure efforts to the tune of zero, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to go after again um, Hampton citizens, Hampton taxpayers. Again, I, I could talk with you, um, uh, having studied this, and I will study it more, um, and uh, some of the discrepancies that are, that are in there, some of the questions that it raises, it is simply a, a, a baseline document. How much did the study cost? It's uh, under 50, I think. It was, it was about 35,000, I think. Under 40, four, even, about yeah. 35,000. Yeah. And, and how, how many man hours does your firm have in this? Well, a lot of, I don't know that exactly, more than probably we build, but there's a lot of um, subs between the TV work that was carried in there too and some mm -hmm. of the traffic control. So our man hours might have been two thirds of the cost. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you Can for the report. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, and, and I'm just not done. I, I, I do think uh, that this uh, does highlight a lot of successes in Hampton. And uh, I'm on, not intimidated by the data that's in there. And it's managed well, and even, even some of the pipes where there were defects, there was no seepage. Uh, some of your databases, 25% uh, were skewed. Um, so there's a lot in here that uh, a real professional would look at and uh, also back up and say that uh, wastewater treatment processing uh, or water processing and the resource of water is, is very effectively managed by this town as it is. And, of course, we're seeking room for improvement, but I wanted to get that on the table, that this is not all doom and gloom and that there are other financial considerations that this town has as well. So, I just wanted to say, if I'm not mistaken, I believe your company is the one that did the, um, the reports before. I'm almost positive. The, the 1984 data was some <laughs> flow work that Underwood had done, yes. Yes, and we've always been very happy with your work, and thank, thank you. you for coming tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Feel free if there's any other questions, okay? Yeah. But thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks, Keith. Good All job. Right, we'll see you. <laughs> I'll talk I and I all night too, guys. <laughs> Roman four salt bid, 2014-2015, sir. Yes. Um, this is simply a request to waiver the purchasing policy section 718-4 for award. Um, whereas we're taking advantage of using the state of New Hampshire DOT bid for uh, salt purchase. It's actually a very good competitive uh, price. We'll be able to get any cheaper because we're using their buying power uh, as well as all the other, most other communities use their bids as well. So it's, it's really a very easy one. Select and we'll how much salt is left in the salt shed now? Do you have any way of gauging what's what's in there? I mean, it was just there on Saturday. Tons. Hmm? 800 tons. Okay. So it's about, what, half full or? Yeah. Yeah. So this will pick up the rest. Yes. Any thought of, because that salt shed is exposed, um, both east and west, particularly to the east, have you given any thought to the suggestion that was made, I believe, last year about closing in a little bit of the back of the east side to prevent the uh, humidity and so forth? That's all open, and that salt right. sucks up the water. Well, we have. Um, the first step that we want to do is actually move the sand pile to the east side. Uh, because we mix, in a lot of instances, we mix sand with salt to extend it. Ah. Uh, so a more efficient operation. It's one of our fall tasks to get yep. ready for winter. Yep. So we're going to end up building a crib there, moving all the sand. Um, we'd, we'd rather, we don't want to put the cart before the horse. That needs to be done before we close okay. our heater end. Because currently, the loading ramp's on the opposite end. So right. we're going to end up moving that and moving that ramp also. So you're going to continue to load from which end? What, what's, what are you doing? Is the west end? Well, the, the west end is the loading end right now, right? Correct. The one that's facing the transfer station, Correct. right? I'm clicking. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And you've got to keep... I'm just concerned, especially with the east wind, the east facing, and that was built all open with no provision okay, just, for... Just, just we're a point of order. We have an agenda for agenda items. We're specifically talking about the SALT bid for 2014 through 2015. So if we can keep our questions related direct, directly to the bid process, which is the absolute essence of the agenda item, we can talk about that, what you want to talk about, old business. But right now, to 
stick to the agenda. We'll be here all night. It's the salt have, bid for 2014-15. Do you have questions on the salt bid, Select Melissa? If we are talking about the salt bid, I want to know whether we are wasting money with all the salt waste. That is, that, that, that is mutually exclusive well, from, the, from the actual bid process, which okay. is the essence of the agenda item. Yep. Point of order. Do you have questions on the, on the agenda item? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. So um, are you suggesting uh, for the salt bid, what, what is your main suggestion? That, we, that you waive the bid process so that we just use the state of New Hampshire's um, bid. They put it out to bid. They put hundreds of tons out, and they get a very good price. And state law allows us as a municipality, most municipalities do this, to tack on and get their bid price. So it's a good deal. So it is less because I know for many years we didn't do it that way. And I'm all for doing whichever one is less. This is definitely less. I don't know how it was back then. I'm not going to comment on that. But I know that this is, we couldn't get a better deal than this deal here. Point of order, last year it was 48.37 a ton. This year it's 48.43 a ton. So it's gone up to six yeah. cents um, using the state's bid. Yeah, because I remember when we used to use um, Granite State Minerals, they always used to say that, that it was the cheapest. Well, this is who the contract would be with Granite State Minerals. <laughs> Thank but you. last winter, it was actually with their competitors, International Salt. Thank so it you. seems to flip depending on who's got too much on the pile. Great. Thank you very much. So I think the state bid's a good way to go, as you say. Mm -hmm. They're looking out for the best interest of the whole state, and they, <laughs> they are. And when they go to bid like this, and uh, they do get a, a much better rate because they are bidding so many more tons, so I think it's it's fine. Select like Modell. Fine. Thank you. Um, it's the best way to go. Mr. Welch, does this need to be a motion? If so, please phrase, frame it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this does need to be a motion. This is not a waiver. This is an approval of the ability of the Public Works Department to use the state bidding mm -hmm. process and to approve a bid that's in excess of fifty thousand excess of fifty thousand dollars using that process. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. I like no. that motion. And I'll seconded second by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Roman five, two thousand fifteen budget review one, selectman's perspective. This was an agenda item for the board to have offer any comments uh, for the board's own edification. Uh, and to let their positions be known going forward for the budget. Selectman Wolsey, do you have a selectman's perspective? I think we all need to see the exact uh, requests that the department head is making and, and the priorities that he has in mind. And I appreciate the fact that the manager put the budget together without any specific uh, restraints as far as percentages go. Uh, I like seeing the basically pretty much the raw request uh, that Fred has been over. This uh, certainly is the largest expenditure in the budget. It's the biggest department in the budget and uh, is, is multi, composed of multi-tasks that benefit the town. How How comfortable are you, Keith, especially with the road? P pardon me, just for a second. This is for the. This is in public works specific. This is your perspective on the budget. Okay. And then well, we'll I just want to make sure we can fix the roads. Okay. This is. We'll we'll get to public works. Go. This is That's the selectman's it. perspective. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> tried to pay a lot of attention to this, and I wish I could say that we had taken more out of it, <laughs> if it was possible. What more out of? the budget if the budget could be a little smaller than what it is okay thank you sir i think we still need to look at it we need to move forward uh we have this part right now but i'm i'm waiting to hear some more information thank you sir i think it was put together nicely presented to us nicely mm -hmm. and uh we still need to look at it and go forward from here thank you sir uh i've, I've got some comments second year uh in, in my third year on the budget and uh, there have been various uh, statements from board members. Uh, there have been uh, um, uh, comments in the press. And I think it's important that we emphasize uh, the voice of financial accounting, uh, the science of actuarial data, statistics, and operations data. And we've requested data for those department heads that are 
Celebritus and their response for fi uh, operational data. Thank you very much. Um, we, we hear and we've heard at this table that we are growing, that we need more employees. We need three here, we need two there. Um, and I, I think when you examine statistics, when you examine uh, websites, whether it's the FBI, the Department of Justice, when you examine the data, um, uh, I, I would not disagree with those that would assert that we, we don't need new employees. Uh, Hampton is an aging, law-abiding, safe community, uh, and I'm going to get into some of the data here, and this is going to be a couple of minutes, uh, uh, and it will be statistical. Um, but we're not growing, and that we are revenue-challenged, and that we do have some serious encumbrances, and that to protect uh, – Specifically, I want to speak to the, the, the union uh, employees in this town and the taxpayers in this town. And I think their interests are interlocked, and I think they're in unison, and I think we protect the people that are paying taxes, and we protect the employees that we have now under what are some significantly arduous financial challenges. Uh, in terms of uh, mutual aid, uh, the risk management profession that Mary Louise is part of, uh, they code, they inspect whether it's commercial or residential uh, properties, just as much as our own town does, to protect their mortgagee interest, to protect banks' interest, uh, uh, to protect their own insurance companies. So that, that's an ongoing thing. We have mutual aid with the town. We do not exploit our mutual aid uh, options enough with the state. Uh, we, we say we need new police officers. The state of New Hampshire needs to patrol its beach more uh, than they do, and they, they really don't do much of it. Uh, there's no amount of additional personnel, and these are my opinions, uh, of personnel or employees or tax increases that is going to make Hampton safer from an aberrational or sensational or statistically improbable malady or misfortune. There's just, there, it's just not going to happen, in my opinion. And when we aren't growing and aging. Uh, the New Hampshire uh, Employment Security off their website yesterday, 2,000. Um, the population in Hampton, 14,973. The population in 2012 is 15,000. So we're growing four or five people a year. So we are not growing. The Census Bureau is interesting because their numbers are different, but they track the same essential lack of growth. And when you drill down into the metrics of their data and you look at ages, we are just growing older and older, me included, this entire board included, many people in this room. Uh, there's less crime, we're more responsible perhaps than young people, and, and it, it is an aging community. And in terms of study of crime, crime is down in Hampton, crime is down in the state, and crime is down in the nation. That includes violent crime. And when you do the forensics, that's what shows up. Uh, Ed Tinker, in terms of <coughs> revenue, um, and, and he copied board members on this, did uh, a, a revenue uh, analysis of the new growth. We're growing, and people think because they see new growth, it's money in our bank account. And we're going to talk in a, in, for, for a few moments on the fact that it's not, and that when you factor in abatements, we're actually losing money on the primary sole source of revenue to this town. And in 2012, the tax revenue increase and this is from an August 11th, 2014, from Ed Tinker, the town of New Hampshire assessor. Tax revenue increase was $66,000 from all the building that went on in 2012. Getting on to some of our expenses, the New Hampshire retirement system increase for 2012 was $153,000. So we're, we're bleeding red ink already on just that one line. The 2012 health insurance increase for 2012 was $40,000. Now we're getting into the prudential affairs of, I think, what selectmen really should do is provide information so people can make decisions. So for 2012, from our major funding, and which is our real estate income and all the growth, uh, we lost $127,000. We're in the red on that. That doesn't account any bonding. That doesn't account any other wage increases. Those are just two benefit lines and our major income line. In 2013, importantly, uh, the tax revenue increase from Mr. Tinker's revenue statement from August 11th was a resulting net increase of $15,000, $15,698. In 
In 2013, the New Hampshire retirement system increase was $247,000 from the $153,000 that went up in 2012. So again, we are hemorrhaging revenue on an income statement. Uh, there was a health insurance decrease in 2013. Um, actually, there was a, a health insurance, there was that play with the refund. So that, that is it, it was, we're $217,000 in the red in 2013. In 2014, for Mr. Tinker's revenue statements, the town of Hampton increased from its property taxes from the year before, 165000 the New Hampshire retirement system line in 2014 went up $214,000. So we're losing money on that again. 2015 onwards, the finance director has projected a $150,000 increase every year on the health insurance line. So we're challenged by that phenomena. And statistical analysis would, would indicate that we're not growing and that we're not making a lot of money from this development. I mean, they're just, they're just mutually exclusive phenomena. So regarding the New Hampshire retirement system uh, uh, data, that, that, that is a study item that's equally as painful as your INI study. Um, and it's bleak, it's under court challenge, which could increase the, the uh, amount owed by the town. The contribution rates this year have been assigned for Group 2 for police, it is 26%. For fire, it's 30%. So we have a defined benefit plan, but we have no idea. There's no definition of the cost. It has gone free range, and it's out of our control. And this is information that we've requested, specifically, again, talking about the prudential affairs of the town. Legislation enacted in 2011, House Bill 2, made several major changes to the law regarding, regarding the retirement system. A coalition representing public employees is currently challenging several leg legislative enactments in court, including a number of provisions. Two of these are currently in the Supreme Court. So it's gone up 30 percent. It's increase every year is vastly outpacing our revenue from real estate, and we have no control over it. Additionally, in the uh, union contracts that will be coming up this year, there were requirements for both the town and the unions to establish health insurance committees for a line that is eating us alive. It was never done by the board. It was never done by the unions. And that is not a standard that I think Hampton should continue with. So coming up very quickly, we should have um, a health insurance committee with some real experts, strategic experts, to unburden us from some of this uh, increase in cost. The outstanding pension obligation is f almost $4.7 billion uh, currently. So it's not something that's going to go away overnight. Uh, these increases are going to continue, whether there is a court challenge or not. When you delve into the data, and again, this is a selectman's budget perspective, and it's just talking about numbers that are real. Uh, in 2003, there were 50,000 active members for the New Hampshire retirement system that were working. The retirees were 17,000. In 2012, there's fewer members. There's 48,000 members actually paying in, and there's almost 30,000 beneficiaries. If you know anything about math, that's not a good formula. Uh, that means that rate will probably continue to increase. The unfunded liability that exists right now for that 4.6 uh, is more than two-thirds of the rate that we pay in this town. Two-thirds of, of our bill for our, our valuable union employees is for the unfunded portion of this. And I know we have got legislators that have worked on this. It's going to affect Gatsby going forward. We're coming up and working on those issues. But those are bleak numbers. And so when we hear about studies for ten, or, or, or capital improvements for $10 million and, and you know, we're kicking the can or biting the bullet, uh, there's only so much money out there. And uh, the revenue uh, does not look good. 
And uh, this budget is this budget. Uh, the town has voted to build new fire stations, new police stations. We have great employees. We want to protect them. And I think it's important that we all study the data and that we not just simply say we're growing or this board didn't do that or, you know, we need more employees. And I would say that um, I would support no new employees, and this is my opinion going forward, based on these numbers, and that we protect those union members and those employees that are out there working very hard for your department, for police, and for fire, and in this building. And when you look at the numbers, you look at the benefits versus the salary. The benefits are uncontrollable by us. They're determined by another body that has accountability to nobody in Concord. We have no control over it. They set the rate and we pay it. And when we start adding employees, those rates continue to go. We can't adequately compensate our employees and protect our taxpayers here. So there's been talk of new employees. I am not in favor, in terms of my perspective, of adding one new employee. And I'm interested in protecting the taxpayer and our present employees here and doing everything we can. And having said that, I think that when we, when we actually look at the numbers, and we actually look at data, and we look at crime, and we look at fire, and we look at demographics in this community, it's a fabulous community. I think what we have now is sustainable, and I think that we can continue to march and we identify these challenges, but not to bring these statistics and these demographics into the budget process, I think, is uh, irresponsible. Thank you very much for listening to that. I know it was a lot. And now we will get into your budget, sir. Welcome, I will Board say is the connection between the II study and the New Hampshire retirement system. They both involve aging infrastructure. Amen, sir. Thank you. <laughs> your budget, sir. So, um, Mr. Chairman, how would you like me to approach this? Uh, your budget. Okay. Um, so, um, you've all been presented with what I've proposed and what the town manager has proposed. Mm -hmm. um, I understand all the town manager's cuts and um, we, can live <coughs> we can live with those cuts, um, do the best we can. Um, I will say that when you talk about manpower, uh, my concern is that um, with the responsibilities that we have, particularly in reference to solid waste, <coughs> it really burns up our manpower. There's so many days this summer that we've only had two, if not three, people in the highway department, for the whole highway department, because all of our resources was being spent on solid waste collection. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to appreciate that. You know, like in Exeter, we had 41 employees but we had no trash right. to worry about. It was all privatized. Here we have 39 employees, and we have six trash routes in the summertime for three months. So I just want you to understand that that's the concern that we have. If we could take trash out of the picture, and then it would be great, and then we'd have plenty of uh, uh, resources from a manpower standpoint to do the work. That being said, um, the, the biggest initiative that I want to put forth for 2015, and I think it's needed. And since I've been here in the last three years, um, we've talked. I've talked about uh, actually reorganizing the department, making it more streamlined, having a better organizational structure. And with the selectmen's support, we moved forward with that in three phases. Um, looked at our equipment, and so anyway, that we looked at manpower, and we looked at reorganizing the manpower, utilizing the manpower that we had. Not adding on, since I've been here, we haven't added any additional heads. We've just reorganized to make it, make it more efficient, try to get a better utilization of resources. The other thing that we've done is we've gone in and we've looked at all of our equipment and we've come up with, for the first time, a long-term equipment replacement program that's based on the age and the condition and the use of that uh, equipment. And also, we have been working, and Chris has been taking the lead in this, um, we've bought uh, GPS units that we've put in both our snow, plow, uh, our snow fighting equipment and trucks, as well as our trash trucks, to, um, to, to trace the routes and to try to redesign the routes to, cut, to make the routes more efficient. Because what we found was 
that some routes may have, it may take a, a, an operator an hour and a half to two hours to do a complete route, and another operator maybe four or five hours. And it's a little bit more complicated than just saying, okay, we just, it, it's just easy to balance out. Because there's a number of factors. It certainly takes more time to do certain roads than other roads and familiarity with the routes and so forth. But we're looking at that. That's something that we're looking at. We've also looked at our, um, our, at our, at our buildings and our site. And we've been trying to clean up our site. Some of you, if you've been out there, you've noticed we've been moving things around, making the site more um, efficient for use of, um, you know, for all the things that we have to do out there. Um, you've heard me for the last three years talking about building a new uh, five-bay garage to house our uh, storm drain crew and uh, have an equipment wash facility as well as uh, a building to hold our, uh, our, our uh, equipment. Um, what I'm proposing, and you will notice at some point that I am not, for the first time, for 2015, suggesting that we have any Warren article to fund any new buildings, any new equipment other than replacing some essential pieces of equipment. And even though I initially proposed to have two new employees, particularly for the highway department, uh, I, I'm not arguing that we can't get by on the, at the moment uh, without those two employees. But what I am looking for is support for the first time to do a public works master plan where we would have uh, a consultant come in to work with us, not for us, but they would be um, qualified to come up with cost estimates. It's done in fire departments, police departments, and public works departments where they come in and they look at util utilization of, of the areas that you want them to look at. And we would have three specific areas. And one would be the manpower, uh, equipment, and facilities. So it would be a three-prong approach where they would come in and we would have our own management team that would work with them, similarly to how we did the uh, Church Street uh, uh, Pumps and Station project and the dewatering project. We didn't just hire an engineer and just say, hey, hey, go do this, nor did we with this II study. It's all a collaborative effort. We all work as a team to do this, which cuts cost immensely. But have a, like a facilitator come in to work with us in not just our management team, but also get representation from um, our workforce and have a commitment, sort of like a team committee, whatever you want to call it, but really look at for 2015, the whole public works operations, one thing that we know and we've looked at is that with all these, and it may not be for a number of years, but we've got to start worrying about tidal effects on that facility. So I can tell you right now, this time from my office, I can look out and the water is almost on a seriously high tide, almost up to my doorstep. And that's only going to get worse over a period of time. So it may make sense to, and I'm just throwing out crazy ideas, but it may make sense in moving our facility to a different area and realizing our offices. It may make sense to look at some of the offices in town that would. Just, just to point of order, is this consultant in your budget? Yes. Proposal? Yes. Okay, thank you. So it may, and I'll be, I'll cut it short. In any case, <laughs> there's a number of factors that we would look at. I think this is planning for the future. Not growth, but handling what we have, our present day responsibilities, but doing it in a more efficient manner. So I have put $30,000 in out of the engineering account to assist us to do that job. Um, other than that, I'm just going to go through some of the major uh, expenses that we are looking to do. And uh, one is $15,000 for a new vehicle lift in our garage. The lift that's in there now is scary. I wouldn't get under it myself. It's all rusted, corroded, and it's, and it's unsafe, and that, that, that needs to be replaced as soon as possible. Um, $40,000 for new federal requirements for stormwater management. We had $40,000 in this year's budget for the uh, MS4 requirements. There's a number of things that we are required by law. Once that comes into law, it's been delayed for a number of reasons. But we anticipate, I just went to a meeting last <clears throat> Thursday in Dover on just this very issue, and the EPA expects to be issuing those new federal regulations 
anytime within the next two or three months. They'll give us probably six months to do it, but we need to spend at least $40,000. That's probably a conservative amount of money to uh, do the requirements that, are, that we need to do for those uh, federal requirements. $6,000 for sidewalk sweeper attachment. That's an attachment to go on to one of our sidewalk plows where we would be able to, in the springtime, after all the sanding and salt, be able to a bit more efficiently sweep the, um, uh, the sidewalks. Uh, I had put in $100,000 for the repaving of Fairfield, Ruth, and Belmont. Uh, the town manager has taken that out with, he's preparing to do a, suggesting to put a warrant article in for that. Uh, expenditure, um, whichever way this the board wants to move forward with that, I think it is important. That's a project that we did the replace the uh, the storm drain and the sewer system two years ago, and the roads really do need to be uh, repaved at this point. Also included twelve thousand dollars for beach raking at Sun Valley uh, with a private contractor. That's worked out very well this year. It's a, an expense, but uh, it, I guess it's, it's something that the town has done utilizing the uh, state contractor over the years, but that's no longer available for us. Uh, $6,000 for a, a cement mixer to help the boys when they're making cement or, or concrete for different projects, and $40,000 for a stainless steel grit box, which I'm not 100% familiar with, but uh, our wastewater manager is here. You can go in more detail if you want. $8,000 for a sludge blanket level reader and uh, $140,000 for wastewater treatment plant maintenance items and $130,000 sewer line maintenance uh, projects. And the good news is we're looking at a decrease of $7,200 in the <laughs> landfill monitoring costs because we only have to budget for one year, not for two that we had originally anticipated for. So that being said, um, be happy to go page by page or however you want to do this. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's necessary unless the board wants to hear it. I think the board's studied it and it's ready for your questions. Selectman Wilson. Ah. <coughs> What percent of the department's time is spent collecting the waste? And this is waste and recycling. If you look at the, I refer them to the highway division. Right. I would say 80, just, 80, just 80. Trash. 80 trash. Yeah, I'm, I, I know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah, I'm talking I'd say about. 80 to 85 percent. Now, we have been starving our um, highway crew and many things that should be done in good <coughs> weather are not being done all your, your weeds and your trimming and trimming the bushes and trimming the the branches going over the stop signs and and all the other maintenance work that should be done by public works is sidetracked by solid waste um, Rolling stock, and you know this is a big deal with me. You're going to have a presentation for us on the rolling stock. I see that uh, we had a, a piece of information on the, the town auction, and I have not had a chance to look at that yet. I just got it. But are we going to tone down on the pickup trucks, get some serious max or something to do the plowing, get some decent big trucks, and start fine-tuning our... Rolling stock tool? We already are. We're, okay. we're in the process of doing that, and you will not find this. We, we're not uh, looking at any half ton pickup trucks this in 2015 until we finish this study, which we still need. A lot of the trucks that we have, not a lot, but a number of trucks that we have were bought just for snow plowing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make a lot of economic well, sense. I agree with you on that. Now, when Mike's new computer. And the maintenance uh, is the new computer assisting with better maintenance, more regular maintenance. He's, he's waving his head at me. Absolutely. I see you. I see you. Absolutely. Um, we are keeping better track of the fleet. Absolutely. And keeping things. Um, yes. Now we're three mechanics, two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half mechanics helping. Mm -hmm. Are you ever going to get rid of the freight liner, please, please, ever? Ever? Town manager shaking his head, so I'll shake my head the same way he is. <laughs> oh, Fred, Fred. Um, yeah. Now, um, 
Fairfield Drive and paving, which has been a sore spot. I don't want to see any activities fobbed off on the public by means of warrant articles. If it's a routine, normal function that this department should be fulfilling. I want to see money for paving Fairfield and, and the, that section of, of roads in the budget and do it. I, this putting off, putting off, putting off is driving me crazy. You have, we have, of course, the town isn't growing. I, I'm getting that message. So the new builds down at the beach and the new developments and so forth, they're not creating any waste? You're asking me? Well, uh, well. I mean, the town isn't growing, so we're not doing, we're not performing these functions, so obviously nobody creates waste when they move into the community, even though we have big buildings and we have neighborhoods growing and we have all these projects. I watch the planning board and the zoning board, et cetera. So, so the new people moving in to these places that aren't building the town up are, are not using any waste. They're not using police services. They're not using fire services. They're, they're not creating anything that you have to look out for. You don't have extra roads to plow or anything, do you? Because we're just sitting here stagnating. Well, I, 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 just just the point of order here tonight is is I listened to you uh, is, long. Is, 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 no, this is an agenda item. The, yes. These are specific budget items. You're mentioning police and fire. I'd like you to ask specific questions regarding the budget that's been presented by the director by line, please. Okay. And just keep it specific. The, your track record so far, and, and Mike Ingress probably on this one. How are the mechanicals holding up? The the big new Packers. The, the, automated packers. They're, they're taking uh, quite a bit of maintenance uh, because they are so highly mechanical. Mm -hmm. So we got grease guns on board yet, or do we have the grease? We do. Yes. Well, um, wash down. You're talking. You're referring to the MS4 requirements. You've pulled, and and you desperately need a wash down facility and the um, the shed for the the sewer. Help me out here. Um, how now do you clean your trucks? How do you clean the trucks? How do you wash down the trucks? What area in the Public Works Department is the only area, I assume you have a restricted area, for, for cleaning the equipment? Otherwise, of course, the trucks can just rot, which some of them are doing. How are you now today cleaning your vehicles? On the sand pile. On the sand On pile. On the sand pile, we're bringing the trash trucks we brought over there, the transfer trailers we brought over there. Make sure uh, that, that Chris has the microphone, because the public wants to hear, okay. too. Thanks. And uh, um, we have portable power washers, and they're brought over to clean the, the pieces okay. of equipment. And the portable power washers work very well in the winter with all the salt. Yeah, they're the steam truck. powered, so okay. they they generate their own steam. But you're limited as to the runoff. You're you're um, encapsulating the runoff when you are cleaning these big vehicles. We're trapping it in the sand. Trapping it in the sand. Then what happens to the sand? Uh, we bring it up on your road, your, the the roads. I mean, what it what it captures is it cap it captures oil. Yes. It captures sand. Yeah. It captures salt. Right. It captures vectors. Um, right. What flies leave us? Uh, some swill, things of that nature. It doesn't. We do it there because then it, the water infiltrates the ground. The uh, contaminants, if you will, are captured in the sand. If it's really bad or gritty sand, it can go in the grit box. I, I don't want you to think. Mary Louise, that, that we're, by me saying we're not going to be going for that warrant article in right. 2015, diminishes the need by no means to have that facility. I know. I just think that it's important for us to take a comprehensive look at the right. department as a whole so that we can make a better mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate argument and, and so forth. So, pl But I to, want the public piece to understand the need because we have millions of dollars of equipment right. in public works. And like any sensible person, I guess most of us go and wash our cars and clean them up. And we're 
maintaining a large pool of vehicles for town use and really a primitive way of cleaning them. I imagine you can take your vehicle into the local car wash and some of the pickup trucks into the local car wash. No, we don't. We bring the smaller, a lot of the smaller stuff is actually brought inside um, when we use the inside bay. For instance, everything from with, the one... With the drain. Right. The one, everything from a one ton down gets washed inside. Okay. But you still are under constraints as to where that wash water can go. Right. Um, the aeration tanks, Chris. Because that's another feature that belongs with the wastewater treatment operation. And you, I know, were at least planning or starting to look for an area to put them. How critical is it to build the aeration tanks? And do you feel that you have an adequate location? Not very at this time. And the reason being is if we continue to chase the I&I &I and reduce and, and can limit or re reduce or eliminate, if you will, the peak flows into the plant, the plant mm -hmm. still has plenty of capacity. For instance, this past week, it's only operated about 2 to 2.2 .2 million gallons a day. It's designed at 4.17. Right, so 80% limit is 4.7. Well, it's 4.7, but we're, we're limited to just over 4 is 80% of our total capacity. Right. So for most days, we do operate, let's say, at 50% capacity. Right. Uh, the plans, I've seen them, the, when the original aeration lagoons were put in, there's a placeholder for two more okay. lagoons. If it does, um, that pathway that you see right to our office right. will become mm -hmm. very small. Yeah. Um, but there is a place to put it. There, we are not, uh, so it is, it's, it's planned out. Okay. But when we look at things like I&I, &I, it's because we, our vision is really 15, 20 years down the road. And we realize that we chase I and I now. It saves us oh, yeah. in the future from having to build uh, mm -hmm. build a. Uh, mm -hmm. My only caution with that is that the, you know, you asked the question earlier: Is the sewer load increasing? Sure, it's going to. Yeah. I mean, when the last um, facilities plan was done for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, 2006 and updated in I think 2008 they predicted somewhere that the beach would grow at a rate of only seven units per acre but the present given the type of development that's going on and how high it's going it's currently being developed at about 123 units per acre units meaning bedrooms but we so. don't have any growth and nobody's flushing their toilets so well, it shouldn't no, be well, I think the, if I may interject at this yeah. point, because I think it's important to remember is that we had a warrant article for a um, facilities plan study of the wastewater treatment plant. We've got money set aside for that, but we're just waiting for the draft permit or a five-year operating permit to come back from the EPA. We don't know when that's coming, mm -hmm. but once that comes, then we can really look at <clears throat> what needs to be done because we don't want to do any work now and then have a new right. uh, you know, requirement that we need to meet that may make something obsolete or we may have to add something. So um, we haven't forgot about that either, but you know, to do that work, but it's just a matter of time until we get that uh, draft permit. Well, it was Chris's <clears throat> observation. We are not stagnating. Well, there's a difference. I think yeah. Selectman Bean was commenting on the base population of the town, mm -hmm. and yes, that is well, others have said that it's stagnating, mm -hmm. and but yet the summer beach population, i.e., and then the summer waste wastewater load and sewer, and, and solid waste load would would seasonally adjust or increase, mm -hmm. and it, a lot has to do with the economics. It has a, we've seen a tremendous over the, you know the last five years. I'm talking about it with staff. If the economy's up, waste and, and, and Wastewater is up. If the economy is down, I'm sure that the uh, the people in business along the beach could tell you. Mm -hmm. Probably a, a better indicator of what my waste load is going to be than, than mm -hmm. any other factor. Now, the Conservation Commission is working with the, the state and the other coastal communities on that coastal uh, estuary study. And you're referencing the water coming up in public works yard because of whatever factors are happening in mother nature mm -hmm. um are you being consulted at all or you have 
have you had any um, opportunity to make uh, make some observations about what's happening to you because you are basically part of the estuary. You're right located on the on the water, and if you need to be relocated, where are we going to relocate you to? That's just one of the factors that we'd be looking for in this study. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That would be one of the parameters that we'd be looking at. Okay. Well, I appreciate what you do. Um, there's not enough time or personnel to do it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I support your budget, except for the fact that I do not want to see the money for Fairfield Drive in a special money article that we know that needs to be done. And I want to see that in the budget. <coughs> Slug and Griffin. All right. In your... <coughs> Study, is there anything in this report that you're looking to do that concerns the trash or the uh, uh, the solid waste issue? Not from an operational standpoint. No, because I wouldn't expect there to be when we just had a no, big no, vote. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, yeah. yeah. The yeah, last I, thing I... I thought yeah. you're really I, learning I, slow because you've been here for a no, long no, time. No, no, I'm learning fast. You've been here for a long time I'm, for this to sink No, no, in. I'm telling you, that that's not in the plan as far as that goes. The plan may look at the amount of trucks that we have right now and how best to house them or how best to utilize their resources, but there's no, it hasn't even caught, crossed my mind to be looking, I, I'm not bringing up solid waste, yeah. period. You know, and I, th I think that you do a good, I think you're wise to do that because I think the public has spoken. And, you know, and it's also very nice about, you know, Exeter, it's a wonderful town and all, but to hear that they don't even have trash pickup there and their taxes are still 20% higher than they are here in Hampton, to me, is mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. All of my friends that live there have tax bills that are unbelievable. I do too. Yeah. You can probably, I don't know where you live, but I'd say on a $6,000 house in Hampton, you pay about 8500 in Exeter. And you don't even get trash pickup? That's not where the town of Hampton wants to go. So, you know, I just think that we should take a good look at that. Um, <clears throat> I think it's very important to remember that we just had a uh, very bad economic crunch, and you're very, uh, even a lot of the recycling um, issues and that, I think, because people weren't buying anything. And you know what it's like when you buy a TV and a this and a that. You have to take a trip to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. um, but today it's going to be different because the stock market's at an all-time high and people are spending money and it can change again. It doesn't even really depend on the economy for Hampton Beach. After 52 years, I can tell you, when the sun doesn't come out, <laughs> everyone stays home. And that happened quite a bit. And a lot of people uh, want to think that we had a gangbuster summer this year. That is not the case from what I understand. I heard that that's not the case of the Seafood Festival. Um, <clears throat> although I'm sure they're still trying to figure it all out. Um, it's not always like it looks. There are people that are coming from out of state, you know, you know, the day trippers and the this and the that. But there's a lot of people that have been in business this year that really haven't had a good summer. And it's, I think it really cut good at the end, though. And like Jim says about September, I know that when I plan my surgery, I try to pick which of these, because I had to have it done within these next four months, either meaning uh, June, July, August, or September. I didn't want to take September, because September of those months is actually the second busiest month for me. And I think that's pretty indicative of a lot of what happens at the beach. Um, and I'm sure that it must be uh, beguiling for you to sit in your uh, office and see the, um, the high tides come in, but I live on them, and I've lived there for 52 years, and even though there's problems were in the area where I live that come from the state not maintaining their property, the tide doesn't come <clears throat> up any higher to my property, to my back door, where I look and watch and think, oh, it's today the day, than it had did 52 years ago. It's the same. So I don't think this is something that we absolutely need to worry about. Uh, no, no, and, and <clears throat> Rick, I didn't mean to say we're doing the study because the tide's coming up to my back mm -hmm. door at all. I'm just saying that when we, when, we, when, when we look at it, when we do the study for many other factors, that's going to be a fact we want to consider. 
Okay, great. Thank you, and you do a great job. And I'm, I wanted to say, too, the other bad part about your uh, wanting to do this study is here we hear all of the bad points about the studies that were done before when it was actually the same ones you're using now. And I thought of it afterwards. I should have asked Teresa, because I knew you knew the answer to that problem, that it was Underwood that did all of the studies. Yes. Thank you, Teresa. You do a great job. And I'm glad to see that you have a lot of support from the other guys that are down there. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Um, I, too, looking at the Fairfield Drive, that was something that we did two years ago, and we told those people mm -hmm. up there that we need, you know, that we, we've got the, the piping in the ground. It needs to settle for a while, which I understand, but it's done that, and, and now we need to pay that. And so I think the right place for it is in your budget. Uh, I think that's um, that's part of what we need to do. We need to, when we, finish, when we start a project, we need to finish it, and we don't need to keep pushing it down that road. So I, I, I agree that it should be in there. As far as your, your study on your... your you have thirty thousand dollars for your study that you need. I agree with that also, because yes, there are certain things that need to be done. The wash station is very important, and I know you know that, and I know that that needs to be done. But let's make sure we're getting all our ducks in a row. Make sure that we're going to get that so that mm -hmm. we're doing it the right way. We all know there's stuff that needs to be done, but we need to make sure that we're doing it the right way. <coughs> one one question I have is, is I, I I see in here that we have townwide mowing. The, $32,000. Now, is that the private contractor that does that? Is that what that yes. is? Yeah, and that's not for just public works. It's for recreation, Arts too. Recreation, right. too. Yeah. We used to do all, uh, our own mowing huh. years ago. And I know um, I know we had some good part-time workers that worked in the summertime that we had. Uh, I, I wonder if we ought to go take a look at that again. I don't know how long the contract is that we have with them or, or what it is, but the next time that comes up, I would really like to look at that mm -hmm. and see if if we can do it better ourselves. Um, can we can we utilize some part-time people in the summertime to help augment the highway department and the mowing? That might be something we might want to look at. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a it's a multimedia contract right now, so we, we really can't do anything about it. But I would really like to look at that as we move forward to see if that's some play that we can bring that back in utilize some of those employees for doing doing our mowing and also doing it so all right yeah so all right well, thank you it's like a model i'm having fun yeah <laughs> uh your budget's going up how much uh, I think it's twelve and a half. Well, my my original proposed budget was twelve and a half percent. It's eleven something. Uh, actually, I believe my per is fourteen point five percent. Okay, and that in, that does include the hundred thousand dollars for Fairfield. Yeah, and yes. you know when you think about it, the town may not be growing the base, but it's getting older, uh -huh. and all the infrastructure mm -hmm. is getting older. Yeah, and I'm sure you've looked at this and drawing this up, you know, as tight as you can mm -hmm. and utilizing what you're, you know, what you're going, you know. I agree with the study. I think that's good. I think you've got to have vision. You've got to look ahead. You've got to plan. Even if you don't do it, you've got to, you've got to know what you're going to do in the future. I think it's going to save money in the, in the long run. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of what you do on right. a daily day basis, but I, I think the reality is that you need money to fix the town, <laughs> collect the trash. So I'm in support of this. Thank you. And, and I can assure you all that we really do work hard to keep costs down. We don't spend money unless we need to. I have one quick follow-up uh, when you're done. I'm, I'm not prepared to, to pass judgment on your budget uh, or any, any budget that's got uh, significant energy increases. We've got the chairman of the uh, Energy Committee. Dick, you paying attention? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about. We've got uh, the chairman Derosius in the back. Uh, he is the chairman of the Energy Commission, and uh, just like to recognize him. There are substantial energy increases across uh, all building platforms and budget platforms, and don't need you to um, uh, elaborate too extensively. But I would like, before I, this is my opinion, past judgment, uh, 
just hear a quick synopsis of, of, uh, of yours. Keep it to a <coughs> to on energy costs and what should be going on with our, our, our energy accounts. There's Dick DeRosier, 40 Salt Meadow. Yes. Got it? Okay. Thanks. Uh, they want to hear you out there. <coughs> What's that? They want to hear you out there. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, th there's two aspects to the energy part of the budget, okay? What we had talked about the other day was the, the increasing costs that we're seeing right now. I'm still gathering data, and I don't have all the data yet, but what it looks like to me is that the increase in cost is strictly due to the increase in the delivery charge by Unitil. Yeah. Example, wastewater treatment plant, okay? They're paying right now about 12 and a half, 13 cents a kilowatt hour for delivery. We base the budget on six cents. The transfer station's paying 24 cents a kilowatt hour. We base the budget on six cents a kilowatt hour. The budget was based on 2013 costs, which were, it came in at about 4.58 cents a kilowatt hour for delivery. So there's a big substantial increase right there. Uh, I don't really see where the usage is more this year than it was last year. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, I'm still working on that data. The other part is, has to do with, uh, principally with the wastewater treatment plant, it has to do with the contract that we have with Integris Energy to supply the power to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, I met last week with our energy broker, uh, Titan, Titan Energy, and we're looking at two things. Uh, first of all, the fixed price contract that we have on all the G2 or small accounts, mm -hmm. there's like 26, 27 of them, that expires next September. And right now we're looking at trying to find a time frame between now and next September where we can get actually a lower rate than what we're paying now. That's a possibility. We're looking at nice things like natural gas, futures, and, and all that stuff. Uh, uh, the wastewater treatment plant, uh, we've been on a block pricing program since, I think, December. It's been working out pretty well, uh, but it's time to take a look at maybe making some changes to that, uh, and we're taking a look at that. So, yeah, I figure another, maybe another three weeks or so, I should be able to come back in here and give you good, good analysis. Good. That's it on that front. Thanks, boss. Any questions? It's just not as easy as just flipping on the light switch anymore. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated. I, I worry every time I flip the light switch on. Yeah. Now, <laughs> that it, I worry that it doesn't go on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah, that's Thank you, yeah. Chairman. Appreciate it. Uh, in your budget, uh, Director, are any new employees included in this budget that you presented? Yes, I had two. Two employees. And what's the salary total for the new it employees? It was for... Uh, 46297. 46, 46, 297. 297. Page is that? Give us a page reference. 92. Uh, page 94. 94. Oops. 92. 92. And the New Hampshire Retirement System, FICA, FUTO, uh, all those general government expenditures, how are those accounted for? The, those come out of the town office account, and the, she, the ballpark is 40%. 40%, I, th I think that's but that's low. not in my budget. I think that's, I, I, th I think for my my data research earlier, I think that's extremely low uh, at 40 points. So you've got 46,000 in new people, budget plus benefits mm -hmm. in this budget. Mm -hmm. um, is the consultant that you mentioned, uh, that, that is it? Is that in the budget? Yes. And how much is that? 30,000. 30,000, okay. And we, the budget or the consultant that was just in here, how much was that? I, th well, that was a worn article that's not in the operating budget, but it was around thirty-five, forty thousand. I can't remember off the top of my head. Here's my position: is uh, <clears throat> um, you've probably got at least a couple of years in the business. Yeah. Charisse has got a couple of years in the business. Chris has got a couple of years in the business. We've got a brand new town manager. Um, he's probably got a couple of years in the <clears throat> business. You've got some uh, tough guys in the back there. You've got you've got a great crew, and I I don't think that. Uh, um, when we have this many decades 
and into centuries of experience that uh, the taxpayer uh, needs anything other than your expert opinion. And that's, that's my personal opinion. And if it, my firm, I've got over 100 years on how to run our retail platform, I think someone's going to come in there and run it better, or Mr. Griffin does, then um, I don't know how the heck you stay in business. And that's just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're the director. How many years do you have as a director? 25. How many in public works? 25. 25. And Mr. Jacobs, how many do you have? Six. And civil engineer for how long? Another 25. Another 50. Mr. Welch, how many do you have? Public works? 30. 30. And we're starting to get some real numbers. And then the real boss, Teresa, how many years do you have? 30. Dasky. 35. 35. <laughs> and I'm just not, I'm not interested in hearing uh, paying uh, big tax dollars, 30 grand. Uh, to someone to come in and give that many years of experience, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think they had any value. And having read that study, I think a lot of that was in-house capability. Uh, There's no new information, and uh, a lot of it can be challenging. That's just my opinion. So um, I think you know how I feel on that. Um, and back to the board uh, for any wrap-up on this budget. I have a quick observation. <coughs> Page 115 on transportation, the tipping fees, so, 2014, you're talking 525,000. You're requesting 555. How is the recycling rate holding? It's it's it hovers around 30 percent. Still hovering around 30 yeah. percent. So we are removing from the waste stream the recycling. <coughs> at least we're getting some benefit from having the recycling set up. Mm -hmm. But either people aren't recycling the way they should, which is resulting in the increase, or we have more people generating waste, which means you're trucking more waste out of town. Because that's an increase, 5%, something or other increase. So we're creating more waste, the few people of us who are left, the few old guys who are left here. Well, part of that is a uh, cost of uh, a consumer price index increase of mm -hmm. about a couple of percent, too, so just mm -hmm. so you understand that, okay. and fuel increase, too, so okay. I'm not sure I have an analysis. Pound-wise, do you know how, if we've increased substantially? I couldn't tell you off the top of my okay. head. I mean, it's certainly something that I can find out very quickly. Before uh, the end of the budget sure. cycle, I'd appreciate that mm -hmm. information. The last figures I remember looking at, when you look at the town, Mark Richardson puts them together. Yes. If you look at the town, i.e. off-season, mm -hmm. we're over 30%. If you look at the town in-season, right. we're under 30%. Right. And, of course, the state encourages no recycling at all. They say they do, but they don't, so that has an impact, too. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I have no problem with your budget. Make sure that Fairfield stays in there. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, too. Mr. Thank you. Gingras and Mr. Doobie, thank you for being here, gentlemen. Good job. Roman Six Tom. Making that front of your press happy. Yes, sir. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Board. The Aware and Water Company has notified us that they will be taking the Glade Path water tank at Church Street. Uh, out of service for a few days this week. They expect to maintain normal water pressures and qualities during the work period. They haven't told us what work they're doing, but they're going to take the tank down for a while, do some maintenance. Um, the Finance Department has begun the process of paying over the proceeds of the school impact fees being held for SAU 21. The sums paid will be applied against the taxes to be raised for Hampton's portion of the SAU taxes for the coming year, uh, subject to board approval. The State Department of Transportation and Economic Development have begun to set up the construction site for the balance of the seawall repairs in Hampton. Construction work is slated to begin no later than today. And I, we already had a discussion that earlier this mm -hmm. evening on, on uh, uh, where people can park and, and uh, how they can avoid the construction area in order to walk on the sidewalks down the beach. Efforts continue to have property at Winnicunnet and uh, Lafayette Roads cleaned up. I will say that it's becoming frustrating uh, because we're not getting any adequate responses from the individuals involved. Um, I have asked uh, 
through the office that uh, through town council uh, that they this be investigated by the fire chief and whether or not this constitutes a fire danger if you look at the uh, the material that's growing down there's dying there are weeds they're head tall in some places they're right up against both buildings there's a ton of trash buried in there uh, should we unfortunately have a, an accident with a lit cigarette or something that gets flipped in the air or blown in off the street, then um, it's possible we could have quite a mess down there. Mm. If that's the case, then I want to have town council do something about that uh, with the fire chief's assistance. So I've asked them to look into that. Uh, the finance department has convinced, uh, commenced work on GASB 34 and 45. The fixed asset policy is also being update for updated for board approval. If um, we're trying not to, uh, to to bury you, but uh, the, the bottom line is that <laughs> we had a, a fixed asset policy that was done a number of years ago. It was never approved by the board. We're updating that so that we can come into compliance with the GASB requirements. And uh, I know the Finance Department is working on that aggressively. Uh, we worked on it today some more. And uh, I hope that we'll have that to the board for approval within the next few meetings so that you folks can sit and talk about it and think about it and, and, and give us something concrete to work with and a system that will perpetuate itself as we go along. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager, Slick and Wilson? Um, I'm, I'm glad we're not gasping anymore. We're not. Gasby no, we stopped gasping. Good. Yes, thank you. Um, what is the situation? Who is responsible for the high street parking lot? Uh, the town is. The town. Who in the town? Parking lots come under the Park and Recreation Department and the selectmen. We apparently have a parking shortage in town. Um, there are comments that people don't have uh, any place to park because they want to go to the restaurants and the shops and so forth in town. But I swung through the high street parking lot yesterday morning on my way to the market and I want to know why boats are parked in the high street parking lot. I've asked the same question to the police department and they're investigating it. I believe they're in the process of either ticketing or getting them towed. I certainly hope so. And there was one truck there and I'm not an expert. I did not jump out of my car to look at it. There actually were two truck. boats at one point. Yes, there are two boats. Okay. There were still two boats, yes. Plus a large truck. Plus a large truck that looks and like it's not. there was some construction licensed. equipment. Yes. Yes, and I've questioned yes. all of them. Yes. There's also uh, two or three vehicles that are parked in there that apparently, mm -hmm. shall we say, they, they've been parked there a long time because they have a year old resident sticker on them. Yes, yes. <laughs> It would help if we could have some sweeps through there from time to time and get rid of the stuff that is there that shouldn't be there, and God knows how long those boats have been there. We've asked the police department to do that and but I to. Hope um, they're going bye bye. Well, me too. Thank you. Because we've asked for them to go bye bye. Mm -hmm. So they shouldn't be there, they're not supposed to be there. Appreciate that. Thank you, Fred. Not a problem, sir. <clears throat> yeah, there must be rules on how long. They're allowed to stay there. Commercial vehicles can't be parked in there. Okay. That's that's well, then if it's a motor vehicle for transportation for for a car or an SUV something of that nature, that's fine. Uh, and there are curfews in the parking lot which have to be obeyed and they're posted. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we should be bringing somebody in from the police department to understand why that's not being corrected immediately. Okay. Yep, I have asked them in writing to do that. Thank you. Selectman Bridal. Yes, just uh, quickly, uh, the, uh, the they're looking at the uh, impact fees for SAU 21. SAU 90 we've already dealt with, haven't we? Or we haven't. We've not received a request yet from SAU 90. Okay. And oh, as far as the seawall repairs, uh, Mary Louise, you had asked earlier about mm -hmm. uh, how long they were going to be. They're going to be there all fall. They will go until they can't work in the winter, mm -hmm. and then they will be back as soon as they can in the spring to try to finish up. They, like I said, they have. Last year they did was the most sections. Mm -hmm. You know the wall's sitting in sections. Right. They did 30 sections last year. Uh, this year they have a uh, 
uh, with with some of the money from the gas tax and stuff like that, where, where it, there is some more money, uh, they are they are attempting to do the final 62 or 64 sections. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it is a much bigger project than they've ever done before down there, and so that's why it's, it's going to take them longer. Okay. So thank you. I appreciate. Oh, one one more on your on your thing. The auction. Yes. Uh, are you going to bring that up, or are we? I yeah, I okay. wanted to bring that up uh, as we get into a new business. Okay, I'll let you do that then. That's fine. Thank you. So yeah, I have only one question, Fred. If if it's posted down in the municipal lot, can't we just tow them out of there? I mean, if it's posted, that the, the rules are right there, can't you? We we can tow them. Um, the boats and the trucks are a problem. In order to tow those, uh, they have to be disassembled. And I think that's that's problematic in itself. So um, I've asked police department to get a hold of the okay. owners of the vehicles and to tell them to move them pronto like. Pronto like. Pronto like, yeah, really, really quick. Um, they shouldn't be there. They're taking up parking. Uh, they're also causing a problem or potential problem in the future because if they they look like they're batting down for the winter. Is the <laughs> is the perception. Uh, certainly, we have to plow that parking lot in the winter. They're at the yeah. lower end of the parking lot, and that's where the snow is going to get piled. Uh, we don't want to get sued because we damaged their equipment Aww. plowing snow, so we want them out of there. Did you consider the possibility that they're waiting for the, the ocean to rise? Mr. Welch, is there any reason for uh, the finance director to be here right now? Um, no. May we excuse him? We certainly can. So sorry for the negligent direction. Appreciate that. Appreciate you being here, and I'm sorry I didn't snap too early. I don't think there's any need for the people to have to look at those boats either. That, to me, is the biggest issue. What happens, yeah, what happens, of course, a lot of times, and we have the same problem in several other parking lots. So last year we cleaned out the Church Street parking lot. Uh, what we found is we found several derelict vehicles in there full of trash. Mm. It was, it seemed like, they had to pay money to take the stuff to the dump, so they dumped them in a, in a derelict vehicle and stuffed it in the parking lot. Uh, we had a devil of a time cleaning the parking lot up, but we got it cleaned up and with the police department's assistance, and we've kept it clean. So we're going to have to do the same thing with High Street. The routine patrols <clears throat> in the parking lots might be very nice. And that would be very good. I think we've, we've talked this issue. Well, well, okay, yeah, well, go ahead, let's, let's do it. Go ahead, please. While well, we're talking about dumping, I noticed that yes. somebody has... One of our, it appears that one of our local landscapers has dumped a bunch of grass clippings up on Drake Side Road, oh, on the side of the road, uh, just just before you get to Toll Farm Road. Okay. Uh, so uh, that that appeared there last night. So wonderful. Maybe there's a boat under it. <laughs> it's possible. Roman Seven New Business One Hampton School District S A U ninety Alpha request for the district of $38,425 from the Comcast Franchise Fee Fund, sir. Also move. Oh. Mr. Welch, please. Uh, Mr. Oh. Chair, members of the board, we're suggesting quite strongly that this be held. As you know, we've, we lost our service on Channel 22 last week. Oh. And uh, I've asked for a complete analysis of the existing cable system to find out what, the, what the, first what the problem was. Uh, and as you know, we you can see we're back to the old style microphones, and we have service back online. Uh, and what it's going to take to fix the problem, so we don't have another one. And what information or materials do we need for proper redundancy in the system, so that should a major component go down that needs to be replaced instantly, or the whole system gets shut off, do we have those components? And if we do not, what would that cost? Uh, so we're, we're looking to get those costs built. They're working on that this week. Hopefully they'll have that done this week. And I've asked for that to be transmitted to the board through the finance department so that you can have an analysis of what's going on, what needs to be replaced, what work needs to be done, and what that cost is vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what do we have in the fund and how can, we, how can we pay these funds out. Are we able to do that without jeopardizing either or both of the stations? Thank you. Russ, to you first, please. Yeah. Okay. I, I have no problem with that. I think what we need to do, though, is uh, we need to look at. I know we twenty five percent of the fund hmm. is used for uh, twenty five percent of the funds collected mm -hmm. right. from Comcast Correct. is used for running the station. Yeah. 
uh, now that we are running two stations, I want to make sure that 25% of the, of the is doing that. Is that enough? Or do we need to increase that? And if we do, I believe we need to do that at town meeting. We do need to do that at town meeting. That's so, one of the answers we hope to get from this analysis. Okay, so that's why I want to just make sure that we're make sure that we're taking enough of that fund that is being paid for by the people that have Comcast mm -hmm. right, to make sure we have it. The two stations are very important. We, we they're doing yes. a lot of good work, but we need to make sure that we're funding that. So I just want to make sure that we have the the funding source. For and that. we want to make sure they're operating and the, and the needs of the two stations can be met. Correct. Thank you, Selectman Wilson. Yeah, I have a question. Why should we hold back on releasing the funds to the school district if there are repairs that need to be made, upgrades that need to be made, et cetera? Why doesn't Comcast do that? It's their system. It's our property. We own. We own what's in the back room out here. Okay. And and that's what needs to be worked on. So Comcast is not going to pay anything towards that at all. Okay, then I have a quick observation because it appears, and I'm certainly not an engineer, that the old um, boxes are probably going down. We have one of each in my home, an old box and a brand new one, and all the old ones, everybody I've talked to were the ones that had the old uh, converter boxes. Yeah, they're yeah. gone. Well, yeah. we're not using converter boxes well, here, but the boxes. technology we are using is electronic. Yeah. And uh, some of the components are old. Yeah. Some of the major components we have one of. Yeah. But I'm thinking town wide for people getting the reception because people were uh, upset about. The I think that happened. was here. That you was that not was in their here? homes. That was here. Yeah. So you don't think it was related to the old boxes that are in people's no. houses? I, I'm this informed that that was here. something that was malfunctioning here. Ah. Okay. And and because of that, I'm very concerned that we. We didn't have any redundancy in those major components. Once that once fails, the whole system goes off. Either you don't get audio, or you don't get video, or you don't get both. Uh, and, and I'm concerned that we need to have something uh, to preclude that from happening. So are we having Comcast evaluate that, or are we having an engineer? We're having our engineering people evaluate that along with our operating people. Okay. Okay, and let me just get to Rick and Jim and then back to you, Wesley. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to your leadership on this issue, Mr. Welch. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank sir. You. I agree with Rusty that, you know, if you have two stations now, mm -hmm. you probably need to up the ante of how much we're taking. And if it needs to go to town meeting, we need to go to town meeting and do it and uh, mm -hmm. do it properly. It needs yeah. to be found, funded solidly so yeah. it operates properly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sir. Good. Sorry, I should have brought this up at all business. But it is now September 15th. We were assured by Comcast that our second station would be up and running. What have we heard from Comcast? I've heard nothing from Comcast. So what? where do we go from here? I think it's time to um, ask our learned council to write a letter on behalf of the town and uh, to inquire as, uh, from Comcast as to uh, what the definite date of um, their completion of the project is and if that's more than a few days off then uh, I think we need to bring it back to the board you need to make a decision on where we want to go with this this is a uh, a performance issue on their contract mm -hmm. yeah. and we told for they months. could lose their contract it doesn't matter this has gone on for it went on Three for years. six years yeah. but if we if we can hold them to the fire by you can't well, well, we can. A little we bit. we can we can keep their feet to the fire. The question is whether or not they have asbestos shoes on at the time. Correct. Yeah. And so, uh, do, do you we need that as a motion, or do you want to just? Oh, no, no, no. Where you're going to go ahead and follow that? Constant eye on that, and okay. And I just wanted to. I'm relying on the cable committee. I remember today was the 15th. The so. Yep. I haven't seen a thing, so uh, it may come in tomorrow. I don't know that, but uh, you know, I, I haven't seen anything. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Roman 8, Old Business, Selectman Wilson. Uh, just a question, Fred. We're still on track for doing the police budget next Monday? Was that Not Monday. The 20, 29th 22nd? will be police No, advised. police. 29th. That was moved up. So we're doing both on the 29th? Yes, ma'am. Uh, then I must not have a new printout. Okay, That's I'll have to. Possible. We've done so many printouts, I don't know who's got what anymore. 
Yeah. But the 29th okay. is the final run of budgets that will be it fire says, and like police. Select review default budget approval and budget by the You will, you will be department. present for that, correct, Mr. Walsh? I'll have to. Uh, yes, sir, I will be here. Thank you. Okay. Good. I'll have to look for my new printout. I hope I have one. Thank you. All right. Selectman Griffin. Yes. Um, I will have to say that I was pretty disturbed, too, about the, unfortunately, about Channel 22, but I, I figured it was just something, probably something small that might have went wrong or whatever, because I've been watching all of the meetings on TV. It's kind of interesting, too, because sometimes you think they're over and they start again. Um, you know, like, I don't know, it was, I've had some interesting experiences watching the complete meetings. Um, but one thing that I would like to know about is why is Mrs. Wolseley uh, getting up before the public when the room is completely filled with people and telling them that she's personally going to make it uh, her, it's her, she has personally going to have it put on all future tax bills that uh, different HOA groups are responsible for uh, uh, their future taxes. I mean, I think most people figure these things out when they have a, uh, you know, they have the legal people take care of uh, when they're buying a piece of property, they check these things out. Now, but I heard her say more than one time that she personally is going to make sure these things are on the tax bills and this is going to come to an end. And I would also like to know how many HOA organizations have not paid the town when the town billed them. I'm not aware of any. I'm not aware of any either. And that's for after 10 years. Right. Well, to listen to Mrs. Wolseley discussing all of this and saying about how we've been taking advantage for so many years and this and that, it's not fair to the petitioners that someone gets up and says that, it's certainly not fair to this board. And for the 10 years I've been here, I have never seen another board member go up and just say that they're going to do that. And I personally know that in the past when we've tried to put even the uh, dog uh, notices on the tax bills, it's highly illegal. So for her to say that you were on her side, and the tax assessors on her side, both of which I've asked both of you, and you don't know what she's talking about. She, she, she was talking to me about the tax property cards, which are maintained in the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. We received back from the Registry of Deeds uh, easements and, and, and requirements that, that deal with uh, individual subdivisions or, or land parcels uh, that have things like... Um, drainage facilities on them that need to be maintained. Mm -hmm. And and when she talked to me, that what she was talking about was to put a reference on the property tax card, that deed reference, so people would know to look at it. If, in fact, they were selling the property or buying the property, if there was some transaction going on there, so they would have some reference of where to go and what to find when they were looking at that particular parcel. That's the only conversation she and I have had. And who decides what goes on these tax deeds? I would assume that it's done on a state level. No. Actually, it's not. It's not? It's not. The state doesn't keep a record of any, except for septic systems, and they keep those for two years and they go to dead file. Mm -hmm. uh, they, don't, they don't, by and large, keep all this material. In fact, we were mm -hmm. talking, as a, as a good example, um, we were talking earlier this evening about the drainage on Route 1A, and in particular in your area. And I received a call today from uh, the Conservation Commission coordinator uh, asking if we had received any complaints from your, the general area in which you live on Route 1A. And I, the state was inquiring because they periodically receive complaints about the poor drainage down there. No. They have any records. They're calling us to find out what's going on. So I transmitted the information down about the inadequate maintenance and all the other things that we've talked about for the last four or five years to the state and uh, she's transmitted that material onto them. But they're not keeping any records of that stuff, mm -hmm. which is driving us kind of crazy because they need to do some work on it. Well, have these issues been discussed here at the board about what goes on the tax cards? No, I don't think it has. I think that... That's uh, something I would like to see before I hear her up advising the public on how it's going to be. I'd like it to be, I'd like to be advised as a selectman. Can I speak a word in edgewise here? Select the Wolsey. 
All right. First of all, this board has voted that we will no longer spend tax dollars on maintaining drainage systems in new builds. That's that was taken by this board. We've got the town out of it. I have asked Fred if it can be noted on people's deeds because how do you enforce that? People moving into a development have no idea half the time. I didn't know until I conferred with Fred when I came back on the board that half, I guess, or most of the deeds don't reflect the fact whether or not you live on a private road. So now people are saying, my goodness, why are you taking, trying to take away my collection on my, my road? I didn't even know it was a private road. I agree with what the conservation coordinator did approaching the um, uh, getting a reference to the wetlands permits noted on the assessing cards so that people who are potentially buying property, and there was some discussion there that it might put off realtors and it might spoil sales, but so people uh, anticipating purchasing property would have an idea that a wetland permit was sought at whatever time for that particular property. And I would like to see, and I have discussed with Fred, and I, I know this, I guess there's not much room, or no, no yeah. adequate room on right. the assessing cars, but if we are going to say, as we have already said, we as a town are not going to maintain your drainage system, whether it's a swale or a big complicated drainage system, uh, like Glitchfield and Huckleberry and all that, uh, that we want the buyers to know Instead of this caveat emptor approach, let the buyers know when they're buying property and let them know whether or not they want to buy it once they see that they as an association will be responsible for the drainage needs of that community. We don't want to do it. We don't want the taxpayers to do it. And that's what we voted. And that's what I've been telling the planning board. Since we're out of it, we're gonna to try to see that the deeds reflect that we will not maintain these systems. Mr. Griffin. Okay. Mr. Welch just said we haven't had any expenses that haven't been billed by the, any of these groups. Why did we even need to take a vote if that was the case? I mean, this is not a problem. Yeah, Why stand up there in front of the people and make it seem like a problem? If, 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 if I could just offer this, and this appears to me to be one of, of staff work, and if Mr. Griffin, whether he has had surgery or not, uh, or you and your liaison board with the budget, your responsibilities. If there are issues for your particular membership or liaison with the board, that you go to that person with any issues that you have. That's clear, that's concise, it works, otherwise there's mayhem. And I'm not saying anybody um, did anything wrong. I am saying that if you adhere to staff procedures and you use the correct liaison and the correct communication channels, then this issue doesn't come up. And if you can't solve that, then any selectman certainly can go see Mr. Welch. And, and if two of you disagree, mm -hmm. go see Mr. Welch together. And it's that simple. Does that work for everybody? Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Bright, old business. Old business. Well, since we didn't get into our new business, the town auction. <laughs> <laughs> and since it's old business. way it's old business. But. Uh, right. So now it's old. So. Yeah, it's very old. <laughs> um, do we need to have a motion to have hold the town auction? Is that we, we need to have a motion to hold the town auction and the board needs to authorize us to dispose of the uh, materials that are surplus. I'll make a motion that we hold the town auction on October 18th Okay. because the 11th is a holiday weekend and you might not have so many oh, people there. Right. So we'll hold it on the 18th and uh, authorize the town manager to dispose of said materials that were provided on the list. I'll second it. And hopefully we get plenty of money. I have a... All those in favor? No. Rip, 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 rip. Okay. Discussion? Selectman Griffiths in favor. Have a quick... Selectman Wilson, um, please. I would, I would have hoped to see more vehicles on here um, from Public Works. No, I mean that from Public Works because some of those vehicles are in bad shape. And with 19 pickup trucks, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. We've got to start reason. unloading some of that rolling stock, and if some of those vehicles could be uh, placed uh, at the public auction, there might be public uh, individuals who are willing to, to buy them or adopt them, you know, give a home to a pickup truck. But uh, I would like to see uh, us um, shaving down the, the huge 
uh, rolling stock that we're carrying. That's a lot of money, and a lot of those vehicles, the one that Mike Ingress was driving, was all rotted out underneath. I mean, we've got to do something about these vehicles and start tearing down that inventory. Can we maybe consult with Keith to see if we can throw a few more on the auction block? We can, but he's been planning on using them for trade-ins. Trying to get the value of some of the new equipment down so that we can afford to buy it. So we're gonna trade in a pickup truck for what? Well, it depends on what they're going to buy. I mean, they're, they're looking at three-quarter ton and one-ton trucks. Right. Uh, so they, they can have heavy-duty trucks to do plowing. Well, I appreciate that, and I've been advocating But they don't that. have them yet. And that's one of the reasons he hasn't yet disposed of the pickup trucks, because these new vehicles, if we've rented them, are going to be substituting for the pickup trucks that are out there now right. doing that plowing. So the nice people who are going to sell us that truck... Should so take the old the thing away. So you think they'd accept the pickup trucks and trade? Oh, and they've been doing that. For All us. right. Okay. So I just can't. And if they're so bad, we'll junk them. I mean, but we we just assume right. we get some dollars for them off of our. All vehicles. right. Don't forget that freight liner. And are we going to be aggressively publishing the list between now and October 18th? Yes. Put it online. Anything yeah. because yeah. I hate being said. Finance you know, is have the public care of that. Say you know, oh gee, I didn't know, yeah. or what did you do with that stuff, or whatever. Finance is taking care of the arrangements for that. They they have in okay. the past years done that, and they're okay. very adept at doing it. I'll that. vote for it if we're going to really publicize it and get people in there. To There's a motion. There's a second by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor, unanimous. One quick question on this uh, sir. thing. Sorry, I uh, <laughs> while we're sir, sir, this is, <laughs> while we're talking about this. We might want to uh, talk to the uh, cemetery. I know they have a pickup truck over oh, there that they rusty. need to get rid of. Rusty. Yes. Because yes. it's it's no longer safe for the road. Rusty, so. have you seen that truck? Oh, I have. That's why I say it's no longer safe Jimmy for the road. He showed it to me. He shouldn't it's have been driving bad. it. So uh, they, they may be looking to get rid of something, too. Yep. Because we all know they need a new truck over there. Oh, they God, do. yes. The condition of that one, they need a very, they certainly Absolutely. need a new truck. Wow. What a mess. Selectman Waddell, old business? Okay, thank you. Uh, Roman 9, closing comments. Seeing none, a motion to I'll adjourn. I'll make that motion. 21 19. I'll second. All those in favor? Yes. Anything to sign? Rick, how are you feeling? Good. Yes, sir. We have